Marianne is here watching from Brazil. Hey, Marianne. How cool. Oh, that is cool. How have you been? Oi that's vey. awesome. Wait, no. Nope. Oh, oi vey is <laughs> Yiddish. <laughs> oh. That's my saying. I say that all the time. <laughs> me too. Oh, uh, shit. Well, let me um welcome our newest Supremo members, um, Rachel, Small Taco, Eric, and Brittany. And Brittany was another um, supporter from way back in the day. And so I'll read just some... Some of the messages. Hang on. Okay, so uh, Chris says, Hey guys, I am honored to be a Supremo. Love your show. Missed this week's episode, but I will get caught up before the next one. Um, And then um, she had a special request. Lots of new Supremos, and it's exciting. Cheers from Cordeline. And I was not sure where that was at first, so I had to look it up. And it's in Idaho. Oh. Can you send us some potatoes? Remember they were doing those like potato friends? There was that company that were doing like potatoes with googly eyes or something. Yeah, I swear I thought that idea up several years ago. And um, then someone else must have had the same idea because it is clearly not me who's monetizing from it. Well, then there was the pet rock. So uh, Eric says, first off, love the show. From top to bottom, your show is the best once the ladies get to drinking, listening to John try to get them back on track is like listening to some ch- someone try to herd a hundred feral cats. Jen, 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 you are the best. Anyway, the reason I'm messaging is I just signed up for a Taco Supremo and my shot, surprise shot request would be blank. I will not tell you because it will need to be a surprise. And yeah, it's only so drunk Jen can spice up this murder. So I dated a girl throughout middle school and even when I moved, she would come to see me until we turned like 16, 17. And then we parted ways. And after our split, my mother called me in 1998 and said, you're not going to believe what's on America's Most Wanted tonight. And it was my ex-girlfriend. Oh, Um, She was... You murdered or was she murder? She, she was murder. I don't know if I'm assuming she was murdered, not the murderer in Nashville. Oh, oh wow. Wait. America's well, why was she be on? Well, she was murder in Nashville in 1996. This murder is called the Nashville tanning bed murders. And I would love to see what you could do with this story. It's still unsolved. Thanks and keep the grind going. Well, wow. her, so he, she was her, a victim. Yeah, she was a victim. I'm sorry to hear that. That's terrible. That mm-hmm. is crazy. But that is also, uh, oh man, that's sad. terrible. I'm um, going to Nashville in May. Yeah, I definitely want to look that up. I guess someone went into a tanning bed. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Um, uh, Darren had a, a request with a. Uh, uh, maybe you can can. This one will be a more palatable case, John. Um, Countess Elizabeth Bathory. Yes, he sent that to me today. I was, I was going to tell you about yeah. that. The Hungarian Countess. I got to do like three of his stories. He requested another one recently. Uh, OJ. Did he oh, request yeah, OJ? OJ? Um, and let me see what else. Uh, Brittany said, Hey, oh, old Taco Supremo here. Lucky enough to get one of those old Ted Bundy stickers. Late to join the Patreon family, but better late than never. I've been listening to y'all on Spotify for a long time, but I have to say I'm looking forward to that ad-free life. Y'all are the best <laughs> and all my favorite for different <laughs> reasons. And you're all my favorite for different reasons. The three of you make me laugh so hard. And I always get so excited when a new episode is available. So glad y'all are still going strong with the never told before stories, your crazy accents and laugh inducing shenanigans. Uh-huh. All right. Enough flattery. Time to cash in. No, please, please keep, <laughs> keep the flattery going. Uh, story request. It has been covered by a few podcasts before, sorry, John, but still relatively unknown, even though it inspired the film Three Billboards Outside of Ebbing, Missouri. Oh, I wanted to see that movie. I did see that movie, and it was awesome. Wait, that's the that's the movie title? Yes. Three Billboards? Yes. Um, Woody Harrelson's oh, right. in it. Isn't like there was, an, there was a murder think, and the parent put up billboard, three yeah, billboards? Yeah. It was really good. Bit. Um, I'd love to hear John's take on the murder of Kathy Page in Vitter, Texas. I live not too far away in Houston, and I've seen the visual aspect of this story firsthand many times. Um, oh, and then she also has a surprise shot request. Hang on, let me copy and paste it and write nice. it down. So I, uh, oh, but it's 
this is this is one I'm not sure we're gonna like, but we'll we'll do it anyway. If it has absinthe, I'm not I'm not yeah. looking forward to Brittany, it. Brittany, let me record your request. <laughs> um okay, she well she says don't hate me, but this shot screams Texas. All right. What <laughs> Does is it? Does it have Texas Pete's in it? <laughs> I'm not I, I I have the name of it and so I will look up the ingredients. I've got a couple of um requests, but today's surprise shot will be for New Sydney. Sydney 2. Oh. Sydney 2. Uh, she says, um, anyways, I would like you guys to do a throwback shot. Like something you drank in high school, you can't believe you could get down. Well, I didn't drink in high school, so. I drank when my parents would let me drink at the dinner table. So this one's for Sydney. I can't believe we are still going. Well, I wouldn't say going strong. Why can't you believe it? <laughs> I would say like. Hanging we're, on the tip of the wing. Mediocre. <laughs> we are three years and eleven months. Surprise shots. Surprise shots. We don't know what they are, cause they're a surprise. Well, cheers to Sydney. I picked this out for us for a throwback shot. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, I liked that. It was like cinnamon. <sighs> Jaeger. I mean not Jaeger. Um Ah, oh, fuck, I know it. Uh, not Jaeger. Um, Goldschlager. Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> I, you go into the prom, too. There's going to be some Goldschlager there. <laughs> oh, my God, there's really gold chips at the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> well, honestly, it reminds me of Super Bad. <laughs> yeah, Super Bad. <laughs> we used to drink that in Zima all the time. I was a huge Zima guy. No, it wasn't. Yeah, Sam E is also here. Just joined the Patreon the a few months ago. Love you guys. Love hey. you too. Hey. Sam. Let me see. Sydney's here. Sydney, hey, guess Sydney. what story we're doing? We're Surprise on... shot one. Not the one Sydney one, not Sydney oh, two. Well, but we are doing, yeah. Sydney, I think, had requested yeah. this story. Sydney one requested this story. Sydney requested a it's kind of a for you guys that's watching, kind of a feel good story. Um what should I say? One word to describe it. Murder. Uh, syphilis and. <laughs> uh, so I, I'm breaking this one into two parts, but you don't need to wait to listen to it because they're two different episodes. But we are talking. We are doing Sydney's request today. All right. So tonight we are going to China. Has anybody ever been there? No. Nope. I really don't have a desire to go. And it's not anything. I just, I don't know. It just doesn't, like, there's just a lot of people over there. The same reason I don't really care to go to New York City. Too many people. There's definitely places in Asia I would love to visit. Like, I, I think seeing the Great Wall would be super cool. But I would rather do, like, Singapore, Thailand. So, uh, our good friend Tacos Primo Sydney requested this story. We are talking about... The Epidemic Prevention and Water Purification Department. That doesn't sound that bad, does it? <laughs> what does that make you think of? The Epidemic Prevention and Water Purification Department. <laughs> what the fuck? Sounds like COVID. Sanitation? It, yeah, I guess it does. It doesn't sound like a murder, does it? Well, so... Well, someone could have put something in the water supply. This is a this is a fucked up story, guys, and I am I'm doing two parts. We're doing the Unit 731 case. It is an organization set up, a military organization that was secret that hid under the name the Epidemic Prevention and Water Purification Department. That's what was set up. The intention was far more different. Basically, it's human experiment. So I'm breaking, I'm breaking this episode up into two parts, but you don't have to wait to listen to the second one. Tonight, we're focusing more on the inside of the Unit 731 as far as the comfort women are concerned and the experiments that were, that were done on these women, these comfort women. So a lot of like STD talk, pretty gross shit. We're also going to be talking about vivisections have you heard of that okay you know what a dissection is yeah okay so a vivisection is 
the same thing, but the person's alive. Oh, I don't like that. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Yikes. Okay. Yeah, this is fucking bad. <laughs> I don't like that. A little overview on this case, right? The Japanese government has... Chinese. Chinese. Or no, 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 no. These are Japanese. This is Japan. It's a Japanese story. In China? In China. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you guys heard of the... Okay. So the sake does po- possibly Yeah, work. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's, okay. Yeah. It's, sorry. I, I, you said we were going to China. We so. are going to China. We're going to... I know, but <laughs> <laughs> this is very confusing. I know. I'm sorry. We are going to China. We are going to Manchuria. That's kind of where oh, I'm Oh, like start- the Manchurian candidate. That's where I'm kind of starting this... I'm going to give you a little history, but it's not going to be a history lesson. I'm not going to make it a history lesson. Basically, the Chinese and Japanese freaking hate each other. And this story is a lot about racism and just Mm. pure fucking, I don't know, evil shit. The Japanese government, they finally admitted to Unit 731, although they never apologize well you know a lot of people want them to apologize obviously they've never apologized or or released any information on the experiment so all of the experiment all the experiments i'm going to be talking about all the data is from testimonies of researchers and doctors and guards and soldiers because one of the reasons you've never heard about this is because like the holocaust you got, okay, a million Jews that are now free. I don't know how many was free. 100,000 maybe. It was a lot. You mean like escape? Yeah, no, not escape. When or, the, when the Americans uh, came and, and... Yeah, when the war was over. When the war was over, yeah. However many you got, now they're all telling their story. Right. The thing about Unit 70... The thing about Unit 731 is nobody escaped if you were uh, in that prison. Survived. No survivors. No survivors at all. So the only people that can... Tell us what really happened are the guards and the the doctors. And it's taken almost 50 years for them to do it. I mean, this is relatively recent when they when they came out. Yeah. And that's because they're basically on their deathbed. Right. And they're like confessing. Yeah, they're basically confessing. So that's what we're looking at tonight. It's a fucking crazy story. Anyway, I hope you guys are excited. Here, let me here. Go ahead and read this first. McQueez. This is from the Associated Press. Historians suspect bones are remnants of grisly war experiments. Dozens of fragmented skulls and thigh bones unearthed at a construction site are locked at an undertaker's storage area. Mysteriously, the government just wants to dispose of, not identify, the human remains. That's suspicious. (laughs) That is suspicious. So this article right here from the Associated Press, August 13th, 1991. That's my birthday. Like the actual day I was born. Really? Whoa. Holy shit. Yeah, I knew that. I mean, I didn't know the year, but I knew you were in August. No, you didn't. It's okay. I thought it was like, I don't know what it was. It's fine. What's mine? February 26th, 1986. That's fucking creepy. (laughs) (laughs) this happened in 1991 this is when the world found out about this unit 731 thing otherwise known as the epidemic prevention and water purification department (laughs) okay this is the first time they actually have heard about it in 1991 when they were building a new medical hospital on top of the old one and the construction company that was doing that was building the medical center when they were leveling the ground found a shit ton of human bones. I think they found 35 to begin with. And then the government came in and 35 set, sets or 35, bones? 35 humans, 35 yeah. of bones of 35 humans. Okay. Then the government came in and said, stop digging. We're taking over this project. And they just built over it. It's there now. We're about to go there right now. So this is so it's like a a grave like you're not supposed to build over where remains are found. That's bad juju. Not only did they build over it, but they didn't try to claim any of them. They just threw them in the burner, which is <laughs> fucking crazy. Hmm. 
I started the story. They found a bunch of bones, and the bones came from Unit 731. And the bodies were found July 1999 in the, or 1991, excuse me, in the Shinjuku district. There were fragmented skulls and thigh bones unearthed. It was a construction site. It was the former medical school that the Japanese used during World War II, and it was a part of Unit 731. Considering the cooperation between the medical school and Unit 731, the bones are highly likely to be the remains of Chinese and Russian war prisoners killed and shipped from China after the germ experiments, said Kichi Tuneshi, a history professor at Katawaga University. We, but weren't Russia and China on the same side as Japan? No, no, the Japanese hate freaking Russians. And they really don't like Chinese either. In World War II, R Russia was an ally. The, or the Soviet Union was an ally. This, if you really dig into this story, and, you know, I, wanna, I want to say that Japanese people are fucking evil, but honestly, you can't because... <laughs> no, that was, that's a very broad generalization. But. Well, I mean, you can say that, but then you'd have to say Americans are just as evil if not worse but these killings all have these mass genocides all happen through racism mm. that i mean if you go back and look at the nazis the the night of broken glass all that stuff they they had all these names for jews mm -hmm. they they started these names kikes and everything the japanese did the same for the chinese they and racism is everywhere, obviously, but they would call them chinks. And even here in America, there's a, a movie or a little documentary from the 40s. Remember we watched it? Mm -hmm. And they were like, oh, these Japs do this and these Japs. Like, it was just so was fucking racist. It was like, oh, yeah. these Japs just eat rice all day. <laughs> it was like American, like in the theaters. It was, yeah, it was moral, basically, it was like war propaganda. Yeah. And it moral was very, this, very racist. Moral of the story <laughs> is that everyone hates everyone. Exactly. This is one of those stories where I just wish humans would go extinct, as you're going to see. But uh, at least we don't have to blame America for this. So that's good for now. Don't worry, L Lauren. We're just getting started. What did, was he saying? No, no, no. There's another Lauren that, that just joined asking, what? what oh, shit. What? How much have I missed? She asked. This is the medical center that's still there. It looks like a castle. <laughs> yeah, it looks like a college campus. Which is... Which, as you're going to see, is creepy because Unit 7031, they built it like a fucking castle. It had a drawbridge and a moat. <laughs> That's pretty <laughs> cool. Maybe I want my, when, when we get rich, I want my property to have a drawbridge and a moat. But no I like gators. It. I like it. So, this building's still there. This is the Institute of National Health, kind of like... You know, ours over here, it is on top of thousands of thousands of bones. Nobody knows how many they casualties. Never, they never excavated it. They just built on top. No, the construction company began to excavate it. And then the Japanese government said, no, 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 no. Just don't worry about that. Just keep building. Nothing to see here. <laughs> so... And then they just dumped all the bones. They didn't try to claim them or anything because the Japanese government does not want to admit to Unit 7031. They're actually pretty lucky in the fact that there's really no documentation. They they torched everything. This wasn't like a Nazi thing where you got multiple camps. Right. Unit 7031. They documented everything. Exactly. They did that in yeah. Unit 7031 too, and 731, but it was in one compound, about 70 buildings. They The research on these human experiments were extremely detailed, but they they torched them real quick when the war was over. That's the first thing they and did. And this was from World War II? Yeah. Huh. Now, ask yourself this, and I'll tell you the answer later, but why weren't these involved these people involved including there was one guy that headed the whole operation literally like a a mingle or something or a, or a himmler one guy that headed it all made all the decisions 
And how many of these guys are the Japanese in general? Did you see at the the war crimes convention? None. This wasn't even mentioned. So mm-hmm. I wonder why that is. If you guys want to think about that, I'll tell you later. Because the government they killed paid them. them. They killed themselves before getting caught. No, right? I think they were no, paid, no, no. They were this paid sto- off for their secrets. This story is coming from mm-hmm. guys that are dying right now. That and when they, the book that we're reading by Hal Gold is Unit Seventy Thirty One and the testimonies. It is basically about there. There have been multiple exhibits in Japan and in parts of China set up to to show what happened and the experiments for for instance here's one right here i actually took this from google earth this is inside of the experiment right here that that truck you're seeing right now on your screen is what the uh kimpentai used uh-huh. to bring the prisoners which who who was doing this japanese right mm-hmm. they're japanese so they were bringing not many americans but mostly chinese Koreans and white Russians usually those were the the subjects the guinea pigs of this is this in a museum where is yeah this is an exhibit unit 731 exhibit oh there is one now well so these are started by the ex-guards and the ex-researchers because now they're like 50 years later they're like fuck we were evil the shit we've done Like, we're going to be going into it tonight. We're talking about the sexual, the the, um, STD research they'd done, but pretty bad shit that they were doing to these these people, right? And then none of them made it out. So after they did their experiments and got their data, they just fucking threw them in the burner, right? Anyway, all right, I'm going to go through a little bit of the history. This shit's kind of boring, but just kind of... To get you guys where I'm at. 1937 through 1945 is when the second Sino-Japanese War happened. I don't really know much about it. But that is when the Japanese really started to expand into China. Into the Manchuria area. You've heard of that. In 1931 is when they started really expanding. But 1937 is when there were little problems. They were problems between the Chinese government and the Japanese government and things were just not going well and you knew something was going to break. Then you have like the rape of Nanking which we're going to do one day where the Japanese just go into this village and literally fucking rape and and murder like 200,000 people or something crazy like that. But all that stuff happened in this town of Manchuria. So the Japanese took over Manchuria. They made it a puppet state. It was controlled by the Japanese Imperial Army. Army. All right. Then finally, they the war ends, but then this comes out, Unit 7031. All right, so a couple words. Uh, Kenpentai, we're going to talk about. Those are the, the elite military soldiers that would bring in what they refer to as human materials procurement arm. So they worked at the human materials procurement arm, which is the materials, it's the the bodies. Instead of animals, it's actual people. Quote, we tied them with ropes around their waist. And this is this is from an ex Kimpentai member. Quote, we tied them with ropes around their waist and the hands behind their backs. They couldn't move. We took them by train in a closed car, then the Unit 731 truck would meet us at the station. It was a strange truck, black with no windows, a strange-looking vehicle. So I think that's the truck right there. I know it's not black, but that seems to be... I mean, why else would it be there? And this mm-hmm. is in the exhibit, so I'm pretty sure that's it. The Kempentai spoke with daggers. They were extremely violent and extremely loyal to the emperor. The, and at the time, it was Emperor Hirohito. And... All the soldiers in Japan were extremely loyal to to the emperor. Going back to the first slide, we talked about the uh, the bones found. So this is that was a medical university where the bones were found, which means that these human experiments were known by the the majority of the population. 
in the medical field, that is. There were students using live cadavers to do research. That's why the bones were there, right? So this wasn't just a secretive military faction. This was used throughout the medical field. And even like in high school uh, medical classes, they would use these live subjects, right? The term Maruta, do you know what that, that means? Or have you ever heard of that? I feel like I have heard it, but I don't know what it means. I've I've heard it a few different ways. Maruta or Maruta, not really, you know, whatever. Maruta, I'm going to call them Maruta. So here's Ping Fang. This is where the actual buildings were. So it was a compound, the buildings right here that make huh. up this whole thing. So it's like 70 plus buildings. It's, 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 a, it's big. Yeah, no, it's huge. Yeah. yeah they were than I thought. So the unit, I shouldn't say they only did human experiments here. They also did bacteriological research that was helpful and not evil. You know, they would study bacteria and stuff like that. Because what I found out about these wars back in the day, you would have 20% of soldiers getting killed by bullets and the other ones getting killed by infections or diseases, a lot of syphilis, like a lot of people died of that shit. But only 20% would die of bullets. So Japan was actually very forward-thinking in the way that they treated medicine not like a do this right now, a, a curable form, but a preventative form. They invented, or the guy that did Unit 731, which we're going to talk about in the next episode, the guy that actually put this all together invented a water purification system that we still use today that they take out into the field. Because before that, they were just drinking out of streams and local wells and shit. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And getting all kinds of dysentery and stuff. So Japan was actually looked at as being the the bar to for, for all every other country as far as the, the medical thing. In all the gruesome professionalism that built the legacy of Unit 731, there was one touch of sardonic humor. As the massive Pingfang installation was under construction, local people began to ask what it was. The glib answer supplied was that the Japanese were building a lumber mill. Regarding this reply, one of the researchers joked privately, quote, and the people are the logs. Okay. Oh, I, oh, no. So a maruta in Japan, which they still use the word today, means log. So they refer to these test subjects, these Chinese prisoners. They're not prisoners. I want you guys to know that. They use the term prisoners, but... They were just like kidnapped. They basically. were prisoners abducted. Of, prisoners of war. Not even that, because prisoners of war can have some hope of escape. There's you know? like a, yeah, possible these were exchange abduction or test subjects. That's all it was. And Japan, the Japanese, were right there in the middle of this city with Chinese people all around and a lot of lower poor type of people that would not be missed at least for a while. So they called them Maruta, which is, which means logs in Japan. And every other day, the, the incinerator, which they built their own incinerator in this, in this compound would be just barreling smoke because they're burning logs people, right? Right. They have to burn these, these logs, these people. And it's interesting to know a lot of them burned really quick. And the majority of them burned really quick because most of them didn't have any internal organs anymore. So they were just like empty corpses. So they just burned really quick. Now we're talking about probably upwards of, I don't know, 10,000 to 50,000 people that. Wow. Like a shit ton of victims here, right? Like a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that number. Yeah. What were you expecting? Not in the thousands yeah. or not in the tens of thousands, mm -mm. I suppose. So these were guinea pigs just used for testing. The next episode, we're going to get into the real purpose of the Unit 731, which was testing for biological warfare. Japan wanted to, they, they, they wanted to take over the fucking world and 
the CIA, CIA actually released some documents not too long ago that show that Japan was this close to releasing a huge biological program in America oh. using fleas and plague. You know what plague is? Yeah. Have you heard of the Black Death? Yeah. Plague and Black Death, that is the same thing. What they would do is infect all these fleas with this plague and they would release it. And they almost did that in America. Like, wow. they're really close. So, anyway. That's spooky. All right, but tonight we're going to be talking about the VD research. I was going to ask, Lauren, is the bubonic plague the same thing as the, the Black Death? Like, is that the same plague? Or is it a different plague? You asking me? No, she's asking well, Lauren. Well, Lauren had, had said bubonic plague, and I was wondering that. From what I read, this was the same as the Black Death. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm not a medical technician, so, but... Lauren says the U.S. had a program involving bats and incendiary bombs attached to them to be released in Japan. <laughs> well, were. so bats were... <laughs> and, uh, so it's clear that a bat was a uh, weapon before COVID. That's correct. Correct. Yeah, this makes me think a lot about the COVID thing, actually, because they- <laughs> I still remember the one like uh, it was like somebody put a sign. If anyone thought one man couldn't change the world, apparently never ate a bat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. OK, so let's talk about the victims before we talk about what was done to them. Before we talk about that, can I just make one comment? What? That there was a meme that I saw. I might have said this last week. I don't remember. That bats have butt cheeks. I don't know about that. Interesting. There was a picture. I saw it. <laughs> there was a picture. Do you remember that? Uh, like it was in Vegas. Some guy was going around and putting cowboy hats on pigeons. You don't remember that? <laughs> I kind of do, but I don't. <laughs> like I do, but I don't. Anyway, it came out that they were like hurting the pigeons or something. I don't know. It was funny, though. It's not anyway. funny to hurt a pigeon. I know, not that. Anyway, all right. The victims here, they're called comfort women, which you guys can probably tell me what that is. Mm. Comfort women, right? Would it be a sex worker? Yeah, prostitutes. So Japan, this is this is crazy. This is another thing, another layer of the fucked upness of this story that's not even related to this. Before Unit 731 or any of this other shit, biological crap, the Japanese government, the emperor, and the imperial army were using comfort women. Okay. They're prostitutes. But w were they like, for, was, were was they it, it willingly was, doing this or were they like, no, being, no, no. Was no. this forced? No, it was forced. Yeah. So they're not really like, they're not, they're not, prostitutes, they're not they're, any, they're victims. They're victims. Yeah. 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 They're, yeah I know. But I'm, there's like a one, they're not doing it for money. They are being raped against their will. No, yeah, they're not doing it for money. But yeah. as you'll see, there you go. As you'll see, a lot of them were promised other things, and then, you know, like real jobs, and then they would be basically raped by about fifty or more GIs a day, Japanese oh. soldiers. All right, the problem they wanted to solve with that, with the using comfort women, is because. The and I think all I think every culture has this fucking problem. So it's not just the Japanese, but when a GI goes in to that that village or whatever, a lot of times there's a lot of rape of women, right? A lot. In fact, in fact, in the rape of Nanking, which we're going to talk about, uh, like later down the road, because I don't have the stomach for it. In 1937, they went to this little village town, Nanking, and 20,000 recorded incidents of rape happened within a five-month span to Russian women. 20,000? 20, 20,000 in five months. Oh That's just the Russians, too, that were getting raped. So there is a big fucking problem with rape <laughs> here. So they Yeah, it, it, I mean I feel like you it, especially in like older wars it is a 
very common. What like, is com- like there's not there's not like the um the the barrier of civilian versus another person in armed force. Like you're just kind of like overtaking a you know an well, this, area. It's common. It's the same reason it's common for all the serial killers we talk about that end up raping whoever. Dominance. It's like a. It's like a. Uh, you know, uh, what do you call it? Like a a trait. It's a, it's a it's aggression. Yeah. Yeah, but it's like embedded in humans. You know what I'm saying? It's like very animalistic type of shit. I don't shit. know if it's embedded in humans. Well, I don't know. There's a lot of humans that do it, so I don't. Yeah, know. yeah, no, I, yeah. I'm saying it's like a. I, I think it's it's like not as not even. We talked about this when we we're mentioning like the kite runner. It's more of like a societal. That's not what I, I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to say. No, so. Me either. No, the two, there's only two reasons, like the two, um, what do you call it? The the two traits, I guess, I can't really think today, is that the, all that matters from a human is survival and replication. That's the only two things when you boil mm-hmm. it down that matters that you you go for, to survive and to replicate. So it's basically that one of those traits right there. I don't know. Fuck. Lauren said it. Well, that, uh, kind of th- I think that's what I was trying to say. It's a domination act- action. Yeah. Well put. So the Japanese government provided soldiers with comfort women, which were sex slaves, basically sex traffic slaves, just so they wouldn't rape like they do. However, this, there was a downside to this too, because it spread VD like crazy before a Japanese soldier could go off base. And there, and there were three different types of comfort women brothels. I learned one was for the officers. Another was for the non-commissioned officers. And then the other one, the, the last one was for the lower enlisted. However, you could you could switch if you wanted and the lower enlisted who usually wouldn't go into the officers because they couldn't afford it would started just going in there and just raping those women and since they're having sex 50 60 times a day you know what i'm saying anyway disease spread rampant and this was one of the things that they wanted to cure with this unit 731. They wanted to figure out why syphilis spreads and so they can combat it because you can't stop a soldier from doing this. Apparently this is a little more about the Maruda thing. And again, we're reading from the, uh, we're reading from the book from Hal gold. It's called unit 731 testimonies. It's the guards and the researchers that came out and testified. To these guards, the people in here have already lost all rights. Their names have been exchanged for just a number written across the front of their shirts and the name Maruta. They are referred to only as Maruta number X. They are counted not as one person or two persons, but one log, two logs. We are not concerned with where they are from, how they came here. That's fucked. That's, yeah, that's bad. It's like, it's kind of like, like in the military, right? You give, you depersonalize by getting a number. Everyone goes through a, by a number, but even that has some personalization. But if you just start calling everyone logs, like what is, what is less conscious than a log? It's a fucking log. I mean, you can't humanize a log. You know what I'm saying? If they would have called them rats. They at least rats have like more of a conscious than a log. A log is just like the lowest level of life. So when they were gathering these logs up, these marudas, they just be like one log, two log, three log. Isn't that fucked? Yeah. And that way they don't have to feel bad when they do these experiments. And they would, I mean, I'm telling you, we're going to talk about the the stuff that they infected these guys with next week. I kind of wanted to get you guys prepared a little bit, but in one case I was, I was reading this doctor plunged this syringe into this guy's vein. And this guy was like completely wasted away, but he was still alive. He plunged a syringe in there and it made a hollow sound. (gasps) Isn't that fucked? 
So you can't think of someone as a human and do that, you know? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> anyway. That gave me the heebie-jeebies. Yeah. This is a comfort woman, woman right here. It's like a, it's a, looks like a young girl to me. Yeah, 12, uh, 12 to 17, usually 18 maybe. Very young. Now, these were women that would just get raped all day, every day. I have one article in here that we're going to go through real quick. I know this is more about rape than anything else, guys, but, you know, we are going to talk about opening these people up. Anyway, this one article from The the Sun says, it's about this woman. I'm going to show you her picture in a minute. I was kidnapped at 15, tortured, beaten, and raped by 50 Japanese soldiers a day as one of 200,000 comfort women. And it is pretty terrible. So. Jesus. So the reason they're doing this, I'm just trying to make this clear. The reason they're doing this is the bacteria research, which they infect a lot of people and do some other crazy shit, which we're going to talk about, is so they can take over America. They do frostbite testing because in case they ever had to fight in Russia. You know what I'm saying? They're very systematic with this shit. But the fact that they did it on human test subjects that were alive, well, you know, is pretty looked down upon, mm. I would say. Uh, yeah, reading. a little bit. This is I a, mean, it's looked down. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. What you're reading now is a real example from a comfort woman. This is her testimony. When I was 14 years old, my mother and I were picking cotton on our farm when two Japanese Kempe military police passed by. My mother spotted them and told me to lie flat on the ground, but they succeeded in finding me. They kicked my mother when she came after me. I was crying. We were provided with boiled rice in a side dish of vegetables. The food was not enough. We always went hungry. I had to service 15 to 20 soldiers on weekdays and many more on weekends. They gave me tickets, not currency. I had to take these tickets to my manager for goods I needed. I was infected with VD a number of times. Frequently, they uh, the woman had little protection against the soldiers. Kim Day Il recalled three incidents. One time, a soldier sat on top of the stomach of a pregnant comfort woman who was almost full term. Apparently, this act induced labor. As a baby started to appear, he stabbed both the infant and the mother and exclaimed, Hey, these Senjing dirty Koreans are dead. Come and see. The soldier in line came in, holding a lighted cigarette close to my nose, made me inhale the smoke to wake me up. He then stuck the lit cigarette into my vagina, spreading my two legs apart. He laughed and clapped his hands for having done this. Oh, no. Uh -uh. So this is one of the guys right here. Those are the comfort women. Look at the smile on that guy. <sighs> He's having a good time. That's awful. Isn't this fucking awful? So there's... The Japanese government has never apologized for anything, really. Which, you know, whatever. That's them. We can't say anything. But, honestly, they should at least apologize for the comfort women thing. Because there's a lot of women that are 90, like this lady right here. She's one of those women in that picture. Wow. I mean, this is her. She's still alive, you know? And she was raped 50 times a day, passed around... I mean, at least the Japanese government can do is apologize. I mean, it ain't much, but shit, man. I mean, so we're so they did not kill all of the comfort women after this whole thing. No, 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 no. So the comfort women, the comfort women is for this story only because they needed to test how syphilis works and how, for instance, if a mother gets syphilis, will it will it uh, transfer to the baby? Or something like that. They, they wanted to do all these tests with VD because the soldiers were getting so sick having sex with all these comfort women. The comfort women, that's a Japanese Imperial Army right. thing altogether. But they did, they did capture the comfort women for the use for Unit 731. Right, so right. she wasn't in Unit 731 because she it. would be they dead. They were just like, hey, we have yeah. these broth quote force brothels yeah. nearby that were used for the japanese soldiers who would control unit 731 exactly everyone that was in unit 731 as a maruta a log a guinea pig is dead got it everyone died everyone 
Okay, like li- besides the people that were in charge, which why weren't they put on war crimes? This is fucked, right? Japanese yeah. people are fucked. That is not the right statement. That's very but- general. <laughs> It, the, These those specific who ran, people who yes. worked in this thing. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll tell you right now why they weren't put on trial. The guy who started it, and this is, oh man, this is so fucked to Japan to do this. The guy that was the head of this, he was paid off by, I can't even believe they did this. The American government paid him off and hit him. I said that. For, for the research. I said that. <laughs> the U.S. government, I know this is fucked. The reason that they weren't on trial for war crimes is because the U.S. tried to get their research and actually protected all of these criminals. <laughs> it's fucked up, isn't it? Wow. <laughs> So which one's more fucked, these guys or us? <laughs> what the fuck? I don't think there is a more fucked. I think it's like we're all just terrible people. And then the Russians, they also tried to capitalize on this Unit 731. They found out America was trying to hide these criminals, so they tried to use it as propaganda against America. <laughs> I mean, who's the, who's the victim here? It's like you forget all the about people. the victims. <laughs> The people, people that, that were that were experimenting. Yeah, I on know that, but I'm just saying, no one thinks that way. I think that way. All Nicole right. thinks that way. Here's another one. Sex slave scandal. I was kidnapped at 15, tortured, beaten, and raped by 50 Japanese soldier a day as one of 200,000 comfort women. So that's you know, she, I mean, how old is she? Like 90 something. Like all she wants is some. Uh, all she wants is recognition, not yeah, recognition. acknowledgement yeah. that, she, that she was a part of, forced to be a part of this. Yeah. That is, she's 93, Lee Ocasion. She is still fighting for an apology for the horrific abuse. Mm. The Jap, quote, the Japanese government does not accept yet our demands for an official apology and legal compensation. The prime minister um is denying that japanese war crimes ever occurred so they they can't say that unit 7031 didn't exist anymore because everyone knows it existed but they there since there's no direct evidence they can deny that any of this shit even happened here's some more comfort women right here look at them all lined up look at the guard <laughs> Look how he's smiling. He's probably just going to rape all his women. I mean, it's just so fucked up, man. Yeah. So fucked up. So sad. Quote, a 14-year-old girl was killed by soldiers in front of us because she refused them. She was slashed to her breast with swords and stabbed to death. I believe she was punished as a lesson for the rest of us. And they probably didn't even care if these women had special needs or, you know, if they were disabled in any way. They probably just didn't care. They probably just were using them for what they deemed to be their sole purpose. This uh, this girl was 13. She was bundled into a truck and taken to a local police station where she was raped by several policemen. Quote, when I shouted, they put socks in my mouth and continued to rape me. What was the book called that you're reading from? Um, yeah, um, it's called it's called Japan's Infamous Unit 731. Infection of venereal disease by injection was abandoned, and the researchers started forcing the prisoners into sexual acts with each other. A male and female, one infected with syphilis, would be brought together in a cell and forced into sex with each other. Okay, hold on one second. I gotta say this. Now... I don't know if they started off morally better or not, but, and, and this, everything you're reading is from the doctors and I have, we have pictures of the doctors like doing their experiments and shit. The picture survived. Even the pictures of the victims, some of them. I mean, you'll see like a lot of bodies here in a second, but I don't know if they were trying to be morally better, but at first they would just for syphilis, they would take 
a syringe filled with the syphilis bacteria and inject the female. Usually the female, right? Now, that didn't work very well at all. So they're like, well, why don't we use a natural method of con- contra- contraction? Mm, contracting. Why don't we use the natural method, the natural way syphilis flows? So they took a woman who has syphilis because she's a comfort woman, right? And if you get raped by 50 guys a day, you're bound to get it. You take her who has syphilis and then you take a Chinese man who is, was, you know, is just like, let's say he was a a Maruta used in the, the water deprivation. Let's see if this guy can last 30 days with, with only water or whatever type of shit. You know, all these little tests. You take him, you put them together and then force them to have sex. And then you, uh, you, I guess you wait. Is there an incubation period? I don't know. But then you take the man who has now has syphilis and you cut him open and you study the spread of syphilis through his genitals, which is what they did. I have a question that's going to sound ignorant, but I'm not trying to sound ignorant. When you when you force a woman into sex, there's less that you would have to do if the man is the aggressor, you know. But if a man, how do you force a man into sex if he's not aroused? Like, like the, these two people were both victims and they were forced into sex. But like, how does that how does that work? Like, if I don't know, how can you force someone? How well, can you force a male to have sex? I'm not, I'm not, this is not to be funny, but... No, no, that, but this is a can, genuine question. You, there's women that rape men all the time by putting broomsticks in her buttholes. That is true. Look that shit up. You remember that one movie with uh, Stifler and he's talking about milking the prostate? Yeah. That is how... <laughs> I know that men are raped all the time. I know that happens. I know, but, but that that's one way to do it. If you're asking that question, I don't know. I, mm, I mean, I, I don't. Think, I don't know. I think you have to like force a arousal. We like we, you know. Would you like have her like do things in order to yes arouse? I, I would imagine. Mm. So that would These be my assumption. People. I know. It was made clear that anyone resisting would be shot. Once the healthy partner was infected, the progress of the disease would be close would be observed closely to determine, for example, how far it advanced the first week, the second week, and so forth. Instead of merely looking at external signs, such as the condition of the sexual organs, researchers were able to employ live dissection to investigate how different internal organs are affected at different stages of the disease. Lauren had a really good question or or possibility. <laughs> Lauren, not Lauren, uh, possibly drugs forcing an involuntary erection. Oh yeah, to the point. That is a good point. I will tell you this though, Lauren. These prisoners, most of them were ex- extremely well taken care of, which is weird because they're prisoners of war, basically. And you would think, well, why? I mean, they they were getting three meals a day. They were really well taken care of. So I don't know if, well, do you know, you want to guess why they were given so much? So that they, so that the research would be there you of go, higher yeah. quality. Yeah. So the data would be reflective. Cause if they're starving people, exactly. Like, it would be true data. Be other, part, other issues. So what I'm trying to say, mm-hmm. Lauren is, I mean, if number one, the blue pill wasn't invented yet. Right. And I don't know if there was another pill that I mean, preceded uh, it. I mean, you, there's advertisements all the time in, in for yeah, natural Viagra. So there was a blue, be something. Yeah, I'm yeah, sure that like an ancient joking. Chinese medicine or ancient Japanese medicine, they had some sort of method. Broomstick. I don't know, but what I'm trying to say is, I don't know if they would want to kind of dilute their research because like i said apparently this this research was extremely well documented even though it was all burned now which is fucking crazy like what was all this shit for i'm pretty sure the american government has a lot of it you know i wouldn't be sure can you imagine us being like oh here's all the research and people are like well how'd you get that uh (laughs) i don't know Fucking, uh, what's his name? MacArthur, maybe? I don't know. What was <laughs> Truman? <laughs> what the fuck? 
Uh, Truman's a little later, isn't he? I don't know. He was, he was in the 50s. Anyway, fuck. I mean, <laughs> no. No, that was, that was Eisenhower. Sorry. <laughs> What'd you say? Truman's in the 50s? <laughs> Truman was 60, Truman 67. The he... It was Truman that, that, no, Truman was 1945 because he dropped the bomb. There you go. There you go. <laughs> I was, was going to be like, come on. Truman, Eisenhower, Kennedy, Johnson, Nixon. I have a, sure. I have a thousand page Truman book that I've never. Yeah, <laughs> never we sent one to up. Grace that we signed. I wonder if she still has it. Yeah, it costs us like $30 to ship it. <laughs> She's in Orlando now. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. She lives there now. All right. Um, here's another not so gruesome one to read. Do you want to read that? This is just one of the guards walking in there. One of the unit members raped her. The other member took the keys and opened another cell. There was a Chinese woman in there who had been used in a frostbite experiment. She had several fingers missing and her bones were black with gangrene set in. He was about to rape her anyway. Then he saw that her sex organ was festering with pus oozing to the surface. Ugh. Here, let me put... Thanks for making us read that. Dude, what the fuck? This isn't my request. I didn't request this shit. You know, that's not the worst thing that we've read. You're right. I've read far worse. Like I think what? The, I think the worst is still the, the welcome letter for the, <laughs> the yeah. toy box. All right, let me see... Uh... I want to show you the frostbite incidents here. Oh, I don't know if I want to see that. Well, Jen, you don't have a choice. I don't You're know right. why you think you have <laughs> fucking choices. I am, I, no. <laughs> I am the, the experimentino. Okay, so this is the frostbite. Oh, no. So would they make them stand outside in the freezing cold, or would they put freezing conditions inside the unit? No, so they, they would do it outside. Here, I'll show you a better picture. Do you guys see that? On, they, fucked up. I don't think they can see it. What do you mean they can't see it? Okay, now they can see it. It's, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the delay here. That's just fucked up, man. Look at his, her fingers. That's like the one you just read. It said her bones were black. Uh, and I, honestly, looking at that, I'm like, I'm glad I don't live in New England anymore. Ugh. Uh, this is how they would... To answer your question, Jen, this is how they would do it. <laughs> Rena asked, so John, do men get hard even if they don't want to? I think that's a yes, knowing my, what, you know, middle, like you can't don't help have, an erection Don't sometimes. they have, like, don't you wake up sometimes from your sleep and... Morning wood. Yeah. Is that is that a thing beyond your teenage years? Dude, I've never had that. Waking up with own bones? I've never had that. <laughs> is that, that, Wait, what is was that a question? thing? Do... do Men get hard even if they don't want to. I mean, not when you get out of teenage years. But I can remember in class, like trying to push. So what you do if you when wear. When your teacher had the air conditioner blowing towards the girls. Oh, no. He got fired. I had a. Yes, he should. <laughs> uh, He's lucky that's the least that happened to him. Yeah, no I, shit. I mean, he didn't, he didn't do anything. I don't know, Lauren. What, why don't you answer that question, too? So Any I, other men want to respond to that one, too? I had a teacher. He was, I think he was history teacher, but everyone knew him as the baseball coach. But oh, he, he was a coach, of course. He set all the girls in the front of the class and he cranked the air conditioner. That's, that's fucked. Yeah. At the no, time. Yeah. It, yeah. That is inappropriate. Okay, what the fuck? I didn't like, do it. No, I know. But I'm just saying, like, think about the age of the students. At, like, the dude probably, like, you don't oh, want to Oh, yeah, he was, like, I mean? 40 years old. Yeah, yeah. Like. But, uh, was, oh, yeah. So, if you're a guy, there's a couple things you can do. You can, you can tuck it up. No, like, she's asking, the question isn't what do you do when you have an erection you oh. didn't mean to. It's just like, does it happen where beyond your teenage years where you get an erection no. unintentionally? No, the last time I can remember that happened, so I was at a, I was at a funeral and... That's a terrible way to start a story <laughs> and I can't tell if you're serious or not. I, you know, it's like <laughs> Lauren said it happens for me every now and then for a 56 year old. <laughs> really? Maybe you should get something checked out. Maybe you should be getting maybe yeah. voluntary maybe, erections more often. Maybe you're only attracted to certain things and 
maybe I don't know. What? Like maybe it doesn't happen lamp. to you. <laughs> yeah, but she's saying she's saying randomly. Like unintentionally. Like Like if I'm if I'm watching Blippy oh or something and then I get a bone. <laughs> or, <laughs> are you speaking from experience? Because I, and I, I mean, if I'm watching the vip, the blippy, this is, the this poop is, video, the poop this is video. hilarious. I just have to say, this is a great. I'm glad you asked. Have y'all seen the poop video? No, no I don't want to watch it. No, please, no. I really do not want to watch that right now. Like ever again. Maybe he'll put honestly. it on Patreon. <laughs> put it on Patreon. Uh, and that's probably copyright infringement, actually. Well, all right. Like a, well, this took a turn. <laughs> Okay, go ahead and read this about the the main Jews. Syphilis would cause a woman's manju to swell up. Once during an examination, pus discharged from a, the woman's organ and hit the examiner in the face. Oh no! A sample of her blood was taken to the unit for analysis and provided syphilitic. That's gross. Yeah, that's pretty bad. I want to vomit. Um, what? It just makes me want to say to make sure that y'all are practicing safe sex. How do you get that out of... How do you not get that out of this, honestly? We're talking about human experiments. Yeah. And you're talking about... Sa- you you think anyone wants to have sex after reading pus shot in someone's eye? <laughs> I mean, who, who wants to have sex after that? I don't know. Some people have weird kinks. This is one I, of those involuntary boner situations. Let me look up know. syphilis. I want to show you guys what it looks like. No. No, no, no. No, 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 no. I'm going to have to go grab another drink if you want to show me a picture of that. Okay. So basically with the the syphilitic mothers, the babies were mostly born inside the unit. Right. Through okay. for, the forced rapes. Were they tested on or were they killed? No one made it out. Well, I, the, even the baby logs didn't make it out. But I meant, I meant like, were they tested on or were they killed immediately? They were. Everyone was tested on. Even everyone. the babies. Yes, even the babies. So they needed to test. Like, I, I can show you some baby pictures right here. No, I didn't want it to come to this. But I no, I believe you. Have they made a movie about this yet? No, they don't even admit this yet. <laughs> Even though there's photos, they still won't admit it, <laughs> much less make a movie. And, and, you know, Americans not going to make a movie about it because we're the ones hiding it. Well, let's do it. Let's make a movie about it. <laughs> let's capitalize on. We're just as worse. It's kind of fucked if you think about it. Where's that one picture? Yeah, it's really fucked. But people need to know. Yeah. Oh, no, I don't. I don't disagree. Here's some of the bodies right here. You can see some babies. Oh, no. Oh, no. I don't like that. Look, you can see one baby like right there. Baby's butt. You see it? Stop. I'm not looking. These are all kids. Babies. Babies. Oh, my God. Yeah, children. This is fucked. These are all from the experiments. Every one of them. Prospite, syphilis. Okay, let me... Let me Tell you, let me move forward a little bit and tell you what exactly they fucking put in these babies. Is syphilis one of the diseases that can be passed on through childbirth? We don't know because that research is, it wasn't actually freaking carried out. I mean, it was carried out, but it was burned. I mean, obviously people know now I should, I, you can look it up and tell, but at the time, that's what they were trying to figure out. You know, if the babies would be born syphilitic or not. So you can move this off the screen now. These babies, we're going to talk a little bit about this last or for one of the next episodes. But the the people infected with diseases, including the babies, which you're seeing here, some of the things: anthrax, yellow fever, typhoid, paratyphoid fevers, typhus, chickenpox, cholera, dysentery, scarlet fever, encephalitis hemorrhagic fever, whooping cough, diphtheria, pneumonia, meningitis, tuberculosis, salmonella, gonorrhea, and of course syphilis. This is fucked. I think it's more fucked up <laughs> that we we hid these people. That's the only we were so dude, we were so into the war crimes, the Nuremberg fucking Nazis and they deserved it, but at the same time 
it's like look over here and we're we're not only hiding this we're paying them off and you know what's actually <laughs> even more upsetting super fuck you, you know what's even more upsetting is that the japanese were the ones who attacked pearl harbor and like started america's involvement in the war and then we're not even going to hold the criminal crimes the war crimes of this responsible i mean at the same time they did drop a bomb uh, two bombs two bombs but but this that's different those people were innocent these people are criminals these people are criminals no, these not are the, babies not the babies the people who were responsible for this unit so we're not criminals for killing two hundred thousand civilians said, i i in hiroshima am i am i being unclear <laughs> am i being unclear nicole because i want to cl- make sure i'm clear i'm just not gonna go into this one <laughs> i'm just saying that no i'm saying i'm saying i'm that, saying the humans should just all be extinct we all fucking suck i say every human needs to be extinct and this world would would eventually regrow itself get back to normal the carbon car, carbon cycle would normalize maybe again maybe humans will come back again maybe they won't that would be the worst thing to happen. We're all fucked. Except for Sweden. Where, where's Lauren live? Sweden? Except for Sweden. They're just all happy all the time for some fucking reason. It's like the happiest country to live in the world. <laughs> I thought that was Switzerland. <laughs> I don't know. What's the one that's neutral all the time? That's Switzerland. Switzerland. Yeah, which is crazy because <laughs> you can't be neutral if you're like sandwiched in between all these warring countries. <laughs> But they are. That's why they're neutral. Because what happens if one? They're neutral they... until one of them says, "You you better be." It's like France. Okay, they're here. Let's put our guns down. We're with Germany now. <laughs> you gotta fight, <clears throat> Ukraine. You better fight. That's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Kill me some Putin. All right, given that both health and military authorities at Unit 731 and other facilities expressed great interest in syphilis, subjects were deliberately infected so that the... Does it, did you read this? So that the, the disease could be studied. The staff looked not only at external signs such as changes in genital organs, but also the effects on internal organs. They therefore kill the subjects for dissection at specific intervals or practice vivisection, which... the vivisection is the it's usually done on animals even today if you think about it the medical research i know in one army school they use a live goat they shoot a goat a bunch of times and they try to keep it alive kind of the same thing anyway oh that's terrible just for research or to try to show people how to do life-saving yeah techniques? yeah for that reason for, to show people how to do life-saving techniques to, to stop the blood flow stuff like that do they save the goat? Sometimes. Sometimes. It's <laughs> terrible. I know, but that, I mean, it's an animal. We're animals. <sighs> you and me, baby, ain't nothing but mammals. There, there are even reports of the deliberate infection of pregnant women, so both mother and fetus could be dissected to study vertical transmission. Vertical transmission. All right, I got some pictures up here. Oh, God. <laughs> Jesus Christ. But I guess I'll stop here with the 731 for this one because that was kind of, was that a lot? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, although I feel, I, I don't want to, like, if there was more that you wanted to include yeah, we in weren't this episode, trying to rush you. We were just yeah, confused. I, yeah. No, I can, uh, no, I'll, I'll talk more about it next time. Are you sure? Yeah. Because I, I was going to do more with the, baby stuff but oh well, finish with the baby stuff then no okay <laughs> i was hoping he would say okay and then we wouldn't have to talk about it again <laughs> <laughs> jesus <laughs> it's so fucking bad i'll put these pictures on talkmore.com i got a lot of other pictures i wanted to to show but a lot of the pictures are of the the vivisections which the patient's laid out on the table and they're being cut open and stuff like that. But I think we're done with this fucking episode. One last thing that will just ruin the day for you. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> um, this one doctor says he performed these vivisections on six living women. 
The one experience he did not want to speak of was that concerning a Chinese woman in vivisections on living persons, sometimes chloroform is used to put the victim to sleep. At most times it is not, and the person is cut open fully conscious. Oh, no. This particular, yeah, you, you didn't know that? This particular Chinese woman, he told me, was put under chloroform, but regained consciousness on the table. She started getting up screaming, quote, go ahead and kill me, but please don't kill my baby. Mm. So, <laughs> no one no one goes to the next episode. <laughs> and it's just us, so... All right. Well, that was terrible. I shouldn't have ended it like that. Anyway, I hope you guys like that. I'll cover the biological aspect of it next time with the viruses and the releasing the COVID rats and stuff like that. But I hope you guys enjoyed it. And this is a Talk More to Me podcast. The next episode, interesting. Two 16-year-olds murder their Spanish teacher, 66-year-old. And... We're going to be discussing that, so be sure to join us then. And until next time, good night, you lovely, lovely people.